Hello everyone, Tony here from the First 10 Minutes Podcast, and we're going to dive back into a game that I very much enjoy and have played before, so hey, let's play Caves of Quud. So some time ago, I, uh, I played Caves of Quid, uh in the ironic adventures of Blanc the Unkillable. I'm trying out a different character build this time, uh, rather than leaning into a, uh, a mutated human with a lot of physical mutations. This time around, we're going uh, for an Esper, so we have a lot, of, uh, a lot of mental mutations. So I have all the stats and abilities and, and so forth on the screen here, including the character build code, should you wish to try out this character. Uh, for yourself, we have a fairly low hit point pool this time compared to last time, uh, so character a, a little bit uh, a little bit squishier. So we are going to have to take that into account. Uh, we've got ability points stacked pretty highly, toughness uh, stacked pretty lowly, which is a, resulting in that low uh, number of hit points. We also have a, a reasonable boost to ego, which of course is going to lean in nicely to all of the mental mutations and esper abilities that we have. So you can see over on the right under the mutations list, we have Ego Projection, we have Force Bubble, we have Sundermind, we have Siphon Vim, uh, and we also have a negative mutation or a negative uh, sort of ability called Evil Twin, which is a fun one, uh, and also means that we've had more points to put into collecting those other mutations. Uh, alrighty. Now, the, the title card of this episode has probably given it away already, but uh, we're just going to put our name in here. Uh, so this, of course, is the Jaunty Saunterings of Gaunt Bought the Taunter. If you wanted to check and see if I could actually say that out loud, I can. Uh, and I probably will uh, quite a number of times uh, if we don't die super quick. Uh, on that note, uh, bleh, on that note... Uh, if we do perish fairly quickly, I'm, I am intending to, uh, to play this build uh, a number of times. Uh, part of the intention of this game, of course, is to die often uh, and quite often early. But we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. All right. So it is the 14th of Tishru uh, Eux. Interesting, and of course, as always, we're starting in the Oasis Hamlet of Joppa, along the far rim of Mograyi, the Great Salt Desert. Let's have a look at the character screen so we can have a glance uh, through some of these things. So, Ego Projection, through sheer force of will, we can perform uncanny physical feats. Now, because, uh, because I've leaned right into the mental mutations, this is a way of buffing uh, one of our physical attributes at a time. You can see it has very long cooldown on it. Uh, it lasts for, for a reasonable number of rounds. Uh, so using this skill, we'll be able to buff strength, agility, or toughness. Force bubble creates a 3x3 three three force field centered around ourselves, so we can use that uh, to attempt to protect things if, if, if it goes a little bit pear-shaped. And of course we can fire missile weapons through that force field. Sunder Mind is a mental attack versus a creature with a mind. It can do uh, a fair amount of damage uh, and it has uh, a reasonable range. Siphon Vim, you bond with a nearby creature and leech its life force. Uh, I believe you have to be directly adjacent to a creature uh, in this particular case. So a uh, little bit of a, of a double-edged sword. It's, it's great for being able to, uh, to hoover up health, uh, which conveniently can uh, contribute to killing the creature while also healing you. But to activate it, you do have to be uh, very nearby. An evil twin, let's have a look at this, acting on some inscrutable impulse, a parallel version of yourself travels through space and time to destroy you. Each time you embark on a new location, there is a small chance that a parallel version of yourself has tracked you down and attempts to destroy you. Oh boy, that sounds like fun. Now, what have we got in our inventory? We're playing an Arcanaut, which means uh, that sometimes you can get some pretty amazing goodies uh, here in your opening set of equipment. And I'm not seeing anything here that is uh, drastically incredible, but let's just check what we have equipped already. Um, 
that pocketed vest increases our carrying capacity a little bit. I'm going to remove that because I think we can sell some of these things uh, for a reasonable amount of money. I'm going to keep that worn burnus on the back for that one uh, dodge that it gives us uh, because that's uh, not something that you see all the time here at the beginning. Uh, a sharp bronze battle axe. Sharp plus one to penetration rolls. That sounds pretty nifty, so we might actually keep that uh, in place. I'm going to remove that microchip so that we have something there as well. Uh, and for now, I'm going to remove the bow in case we're able to buy uh, like a musket or a rifle. So we're going to go and have a chat with Mehmet because we are in search of work. So if you've watched the previous series, I'm not going to read all of these things out loud uh, because I've covered them before. So we've got the Red Rock, What's Eating the Water Vine quest. I might also, while we're here, actually do a water ritual with Mehmet to try and bump my reputation with the villagers of Joppa. So, hey, Mehmet, your thirst is mine. My water is yours. And we share our water with Mehmet and begin the water ritual. So we've got a, a bump to our Joppa reputation. But unfortunately, because they despise Mehmet, our reputation with antelopes changed by negative 100 uh, and the desiccated babe of fish sect, uh, similarly. Uh, and unfortunately, <laughs> uh, the Barathrumites also dislike Mehmet, so that changes our reputation with them by 50 uh, in the red. I believe the Barathrumites are, are part kind of, of of the core quest chain, but let's pretend uh, that we don't have to worry about that. Uh, as in fact, we may not, because it is possible that we could die uh, pretty early. I'm also going to talk to this zealot of the six-day stilt, whom I don't believe I spoke to last time. So let's read this. Wanderer, orphan of the salt, hear me. To the north and west, through the great salt desert, the six-day stilt splits the earth in two. Seek there the grandeur of Shekinah, first among fathers. Release yourself from the burden that chrome bears on your sickly flesh. Go now. Uh, hey, zealot of the six-day stilt, what waits for me there? Deliverance waits for all pilgrims. At the site, you will find the cathedral magnificent in its splendor. There are statues erected in honor of the Argent Fathers. There are sublime reliefs depicting the most cherished occasions. Here, too, the wisdom of Eschelstadt II, our highest priest, and make a donation at the sacred well. Worship at the light sculpture of Shekinah himself. You will find other pilgrims among the merchant tents at the Stilt Grounds Bazaar, other converts and priests. You will be among friends. Uh, very well, I will make the journey and see the six-day stilt for myself. So we have ourselves another quest, O Glorious Shekinah. Uh, good stuff. Now if we go up here and... Uh, hey, how's it going? Uh, Testifus is still here. The uh, phosphorescent docile cat. Anyway, we're, we're going to go in here and have a chat with Elder Iridad. Um, also, so that we can do a water ritual. Also, so that we can bump ourselves up uh, a little bit of reputation. So, dogs, uh, not so fond of us now. Bears, uh, not so fond of us either. How can anyone despise Elder Iridad? I don't understand. So now that we have a little bit of extra reputation, we have enough here to uh, to actually spend it on something. Uh, cooking is a new thing in the game since the last time I played it uh, to any uh, to any great degree. We don't have enough to get Elder Irodad to actually join with us or to learn harvestry, which would actually be kind of handy. So let's uh, let's go for a shared secret for now. Elder Iridad shares the location of Oan Mula Shire. Good to know. Now we have a settlement on our map. Uh, let's just zoom out to the map. We hold down the Alt button and we can uh, we can actually see some points of interest here on the map. So that uh, that blue asterisk, uh, which is far to the north, uh, presumably is the location that was just described to us. We can check that. Uh, and yes, Oan Mula Shire is in fact there. So let's go back down into the map here. Uh, all right. So in customary fashion, uh, I'm going to steal from a bunch of chests because as long as we don't get spotted, that's a thing that I can do. 29 drams of wine uh, is going to get us a pretty penny. So I'm actually quite happy with that. We'll take these arrows. 
Uh, we're just going to take everything, really. Ooh, an iron dagger is also quite nice. So there we go. Tee hee hee. Uh, it can be a pain sometimes the... Um, sometimes the zealot can come into one of these rooms. Ooh, very nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, yeah, sometimes the uh, zealot can come into one of these rooms here, which uh, makes it quite hard to loot things. But they're not here now. Black robes, wine wafer, torches. Mm, things to sell, I guess. Uh, it's better than nothing. Was there one in here? There was not. We're going to also remember to go up here to the statue and have a look at it, because it's going to give us the location of the Gardens of Amur. So that's gone onto uh, our map, and we have a new quest: visit the gardens. Yeah, visit the gardens of Amor. Uh, groovy. Let's also check that one. That's uh, much closer by to the northeast, kind of in between Red Rock uh, and the Rust Wells. Good, good, good. All right. Uh, I'm not going to go to Tam the Dromad Merchant quite yet. We're going to zip ourselves over here uh, to Argive. Let's just check. I don't think there was anything in here. No. Oops. Also no. All right. Let's have a chat to Argive so that we can get uh, this other quest. Mumble Mumble. Where can I find such a cave? I'll get you a knickknack. We already have a knickknack. Uh, which I'm assuming is this small gold flecked tube. Five cooking servings. Now, because that's related to cooking, I actually have no idea what that is uh, or how, uh, quote unquote, good it is. Let's, uh, let's then zip over to Tam so I can see how much I can potentially sell that thing for. Because we want to get the, the most out of things that we're able to. Now, if I remember correctly, Tam isn't actually a member of this uh, faction here, so I should be able to loot this, haha, <laughs> handy, uh, without it being a problem. So we just got two weird artifacts there, uh, which are totally things that count as uh, as knickknacks for Argive. Anyway, we're going to open up the trade here with the tab button and have a look and see what we've got. Um, okay. Food-wise, we definitely need some more of that. So let's grab those. We'll grab that bear jerky as well, because it will last for a fair while. Uh, going to take all those bandages. What have we got? Oh, a carbide longsword. That would be nice, but uh, I don't think we can afford that right now. Aha! Oh, man, a desert rifle. They're super-duper handy. Uh, but I'm probably not going to be able to afford that. We might end up getting that musket, however. All right, what have we got to sell here? Um, right, hang on to those arrows for now. Uh, we'll sell that. We'll keep the cloth overalls to wear them. And I'll sell these other things. Have an iron dagger so we can sell those two bronze daggers. Um, and I'm actually going to sell those long swords as well. And we're going to try and find a short sword somewhere. We have a bunch of scrap uh, that I'm not going to sell. I'm going to sell that buckler. So this scrap is going to be part of our tinkering because that's one of the skills that we have. Uh, and that 29 drams of wine is also a thing that I'm going to sell. Right. So we have nearly 105 drams on the table. Uh, Tam has about 23 drams on the table, so we can afford to get some things. I'm very tempted to get that desert rifle. Is there anything else here that we need? Going to have to buy some lead slugs, but that won't cost too much. Uh, that wide brim hat would be nice, but it's not really worth the money at this point. So if we're going to buy that uh, rifle, we could probably pop that short bow on the list because we won't need it, which means we can also pop 
these arrows on the list because we won't need it. And that small gold fleck tube is worth a moderate amount. So I think I might actually try and hang on to that. All right, so we're going to grab all those lead slugs and we're going to get ourselves that desert rifle. We're going to have to give Dram a little bit of water, but that's fine. And uh, now we're going to go back in here and we're going to put these things on. So we'll equip uh, that. And we'll equip that. And we'll equip that. Cool, cool. So just quickly so we can have a look at, uh, at tinkering. I don't have any item schematics or mod schematics yet. But if, uh, if you look in the bit locker there, we've got all of these different colored uh, pieces of text of all these different sorts of components that we can find. And having a look at these things here in our inventory, because we are a tinker, you can see the, uh, the colored letters uh, in the alligator uh, brackets at the end. So we can get items, we can break them down into, into bits, uh, and then we can use those bits to build other things eventually. So here under the desert rifle, you can see in the alligators that it's uh, DC2. So those are the various things that uh, we have the possibility of breaking it down into later. So I'm going to load that desert rifle so I don't forget to, because that can be a pain. Uh, and the convenience of a desert rifle is that it can fit six rounds of ammunition as opposed to a musket, which is only one. Uh, okay, so nothing on our hands or feet. Uh, nothing on our head or face at this stage. Now with the build that we've got, if you look over on the currently on the left in the stats there, you can see the AV or armor value is 1, and the DV or dodge value is 14. So this being a, a much more dodge heavy build uh, than an armor heavy build. Uh, and that's, that's all right, but uh, we have to be careful if we get grabbed by something like a jilted lover. Uh, you know, in some thorny tentacles that can continue hitting us. Uh, your dodge kind of goes out the window uh, and you end up dying really fast. Similarly, if you get spiked by a young ivory, uh, which is how I most often die with low hit point characters, uh, not great. So we have the option of giving one of these three things here. We don't actually know what those weird artifacts are yet. So now that I'm thinking of it, we might actually go into Argive's uh, screen here and we're going to try identifying them it's going to cost us a little bit of water but that's fine compass bracelet interesting and we also have a poison gas grenade what's this going to do for us chance of becoming lost reduced by 10 percent. i mean that is kind of handy but uh hmm <laughs> a puzzling artifact thanks for the tip uh, we're just going to give that bracelet and the poison gas grenade, I believe. So there's the first part. It's going to ask us to find another knickknack, which we already have. So let's get that done as well. We'll hand over the bracelet. That should give us enough to level up. Yay! We've gained a new level and are now level 2. We gained 1 hit point. Uh, it's nowhere near as much as Blanc the Unkillable would have gotten, but that's okay. 74 skill points, 1 mutation point. Yay! So this means that Argive is going to give us uh, the copper wire quest where we have to go to the rust wells. Hey, hey. Uh, we're good to go. Let's have a look up here. You can see this crack that's just appeared here uh, in this water pond. So that actually leads down to the underground river that does uh, head north underground to Red Rock where the What's Eating the Water Vine quest is. We're not going to go down there, though, because it does tend to be uh, a little steeper in terms of uh, its difficulty, uh, and that's not what we need at the moment. All right, we have discovered a rust bog here to the north of town. So this is some form of natural feature. I can see a chest up there that we're definitely going to go and have a look at. And, of course, we can also see all of... Uh, these kudzu as well, which uh, have the ability to rust things uh, if we get adjacent to them. And we definitely don't want that uh, because we don't want our groovy gear 
to get rusted away. Um, you may or may not have noticed that uh, that weird little explosiony thing because I am an Arcanaut. I can actually rummage through. Uh, I can actually rummage through uh, piles of stuff and potentially find items. So I did just find a fractured microchip there, which is nice. I uh, just need to make sure. Ooh. Good, good. What is this? A puzzling artifact. Thanks for the help. Make some progress. Understanding the small sphere of negative weight. That's kind of groovy. I'm uh, going to grab all these things. Um, and I think I'm also going to... Whoops. Oh, there's another chest over there. I'm also going to try picking up... Oh, it's a rust chewed locker. That's why it's red. I thought it was just covered in blood. Silly me. Um, let's have a look at this other chest then. Make sure we approach it in a direction that we can't... Uh, oh, look at all these goodies. This is tremendous. I like this rust bog, provided that there isn't anything wandering around in it that can kill me. So this is possibly a, a, a great opportunity to point out... Uh, one of the many, many reasons why I love this game so much. Uh, this rust bog is uh, is part of that good old random number generator, uh, throwing up something cool that you don't always see in the game. So the way that this game uh, handles and utilizes randomness is is pretty nifty, and I very much enjoy the ability to uh, to even in the early game. Uh, play things that uh, that could feel familiar. There is another chest over here. Thank heavens that I am so pedantic in checking. A small box. Ooh, and it's also in blue. Whoops. I grabbed all of it. Let's have a look. What are you going to tell me? A puzzling artifact again. Uh, is it possible? I don't think I'm good enough to uh, to investigate what it is. Were there any other chests that I didn't see? It doesn't look like it. So there's some there's some real neat stuff there. Uh, I might actually head back and see if Argive can uh, can identify some of this stuff. CS the uh, we don't have a don't have a torch in our hand. Hang on. All right, now we can see when it's when it's night time. So yes, the way that uh, the way that the game utilizes randomness is is an awful lot of fun. The item is too complex. Uh, good old spelling error there with the two. The item is too complex for Argive to identify. Cool. What about some of these other things? That's uh, that's expensive looking. No, but not as expensive looking as some of these other things. That one there is very expensive looking. Also too complex. Sure. I'm going to guess then that the cost is related to whether or not... Yeah, that seems to be the case. We've found a bunch of stuff that is so amazing that, uh, that nobody can tell me what it is. Magnetized boots. Awesome, what does that mean? Negative five move speed. Uh, okay. Well, it gives us an armor, but it means that we move slower. Interesting. What has this done to our carry weight? We have 139 of 240 pounds, so we're still doing okay. Anyway, hurrah for, uh, hurrah for those rust bogs. Uh... They may only be on that one screen, or maybe they extend even further. Let's go and have a look at this cool random thing uh, that we've discovered so close to town. Uh, keeping in mind that we don't want to wander into a kudzu. But we do want to keep looking in these rubbish piles. 
not always stuff in them, but every now and then you can find some some pretty nice goodies. All right. Doesn't seem that we're still uh, rust bogging anymore. Well, maybe we are. Those kudzu are still around. Gone all quiet here because I'm trying to make sure that I don't uh, let my enthusiasm get the better of me and, and start barging around too quickly. Is that salamander? No, it is neutral to us. Sometimes uh, various creatures uh, can have... Uh, sorry, sometimes you can have a varying reputation with uh, with different creature groups, so it's always worth checking when you find them for the first time. Got some witchwood trees around here, but I can't harvest anything from them because I don't have a harvestry yet. Yay! We finished the step. Travel to Red Rock of the quest. What's eating the water vine? Have fifty experience points. Thank you so much. Let's see if we can find the stairs downwards. Some baboons. Throwing rocks at us, or we'll try and solve that problem with our rifle. Where are you? Stop throwing rocks at me. Quit it. You too, by association. Baboon corpse. Interesting. Just going to take all of these things down. Uh, because unfortunately... Uh, an inconveniently thrown rock when you're quite low on hit points. Uh, I, have, <laughs> I have actually been killed by that before, and it's embarrassing. Uh, take that, baboon. Where are these stairs? I think it might be over on the other side here. We are getting 10 XP each for these things. A shrewd baboon. Not on my watch. Fifty XP for the shrewd baboon, and we're down to half our hit points. Ow! And I've run out of. Ah! Stop hitting me with rocks. I'm so sick of this. Okay. <laughs> I tried to do a, a rest until healed, and instead now I'm I'm nearly dead. Let's get out of that screen with those pesky baboons. Oh, they're following us. This is not good. Now we can rest until healed. Good job, Tony. Hey, get out. Sometimes these baboons are, uh, are pretty trivial to deal with, and other times, if there's enough of them at once, they're a real pain. Ow, quit it. I believe that was all right. It's another one done. Where are you getting all these rocks from? Okay, there are the stairs, so that's a that's a good sign. Down to seven hit points now. I'm really glad we have this uh, this rifle, folks. Otherwise, this would be quite the inconvenience. So as the dawn's coming, we're able to see further, which is uh, certainly to our benefit uh, at this point in time. There we go. All right, let's get those hit points back. And let's check if that goat is hostile. It is not, thankfully. Uh, more baboons. We're going to try and take care of all these baboons before we head down those stairs because it's not uncommon to sometimes have to flee back up the stairs very quickly to get away from things that are down underground. Any more baboons here? Anyone? All right. Good job. We're at, uh, we're at full hit points. And we're ready to descend uh, into the caverns beneath Red Rock here at the start of, uh, of this hopefully long-running and highly successful uh, campaign. So if you are enjoying this, uh, please give the episode a thumbs up. Uh, if you're returning to this from the previous uh, Caves of Quid Let's Play, thank you so much uh, for joining me again. It's a pleasure to have you here. 
Uh, you can also subscribe to this channel if you'd like to be notified when other episodes are released. And uh, please, 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 if you have a friend who you think might enjoy this, then uh, let them know so they can uh, come along and check it out too. Uh, come back again soon for more of the jaunty saunterings of Gauntbought the Taunter. Thank you.